is Kristen of the Ooster Hat Free Library and it's Computer Science Education Week, a week to get kids excited about the world of computer science, which is all around us. You can explore the building blocks of computer science in the video games that you play with, in the toys that you play with, and you can even find it in your favorite stories, like if you give a mouse a cookie. Yep, that's right. You can find the building blocks of computer science or computational thinking, or thinking like a computer, in that story. Today, I'm going to share that story with you, and then we'll play a game together that you can do at home that will help you think like a computer. And also, I'll show, share some fun games that you can play that are free at code.org. So let's get started with If You Give a Mouse a Cookie. If You Give a Mouse a Cookie, written by Laura Numeroff, illustrated by Felicia Bond, and published by HarperCollins. If you give a mouse a cookie, he's going to ask for a glass of milk. When you give him the milk, he'll probably ask you for a straw. When he's finished, he'll ask for a napkin. Then, he'll want to look in the mirror to make sure he doesn't have a milk mustache. When he looks into the mirror, he might notice his hair needs a trim, so he'll probably ask for a pair of nail scissors. When he's finished giving himself a trim, he'll want a broom to sweep up. Then he might get carried away and sweep every room in the house. He may even end up washing the floors as well. When he's done, he'll probably want to take a nap. You'll have to fix up a little box for him with a blanket and a pillow. He'll crawl in, make himself comfortable, and fluff the pillow a few times. He'll probably ask you to read him a story. When he looks at the pictures, he'll get so excited, he'll want to draw his own. He'll ask for paper and crayons. He'll draw a picture. When the picture is finished, he'll want to sign his name with a pen. Then he'll want to hang his picture on your refrigerator, which means he'll need Scotch tape. He'll hang up his drawing and stand back to look at it. Looking at the refrigerator will remind him that he's thirsty. So he'll ask for a glass of milk. And chances are, if he asks for a glass of milk, he's going to want a cookie to go with it. The end. That mouse sure wanted a lot of things. If you gave that mouse a cookie, he probably wanted a glass of milk. And if you gave him a glass of milk, well then he wanted a straw. Not only is that one of my favorite stories, it also has some of the building blocks of coding right in it. First, let me ask you a question. Who do you think is smarter, a computer or a person? Hmm, it's people, of course, because people write the code or set of directions that tells the computer what to do. And the name of that person who writes the code or set of instruction is called a programmer. So the programmer tells the computer what to do with code. Think of it like a game of Simon Says, where the Simon is the programmer and everyone else is the computer. Now you can play along with me. Simon Says, touch your head. So what do you do? You touch your head. Simon Says, touch your cheek. You touch your cheek. Simon Says, touch your shoulder and you touch your shoulder. But what is the rule in Simon Says? Well, there is a rule that you can only do what 
Simon Says, or the programmer says the word Simon Says. So that is what is used in computer language, and it's called a conditional. If I do this, then you do that. So in Simon Says, if I scratch my head, then you scratch your head. But if Simon does not say scratch your head, then you're not supposed to do it. And that is a condition. Okay, so we're going to try the first part of that in the first part of the game and just get used to it. So what you're going to do is, um, I'm going to actually by myself, so I'm going to wear this little sign that says that I am a programmer. Okay. So one person will be the programmer and you could take turns, of course. Everyone else in your family can be the computer. All right, um, I have to have a sign for that too if you wanna wear it, but you know who you are. So the programmer will say, all right, if I scratch my head, then you scratch my head, your head. All right, so the, if the programmer scratches their head, then the computer scratches their head. All right, and now you can come up with different actions for this and then take turns and see if you can be just a little bit more silly than the person in front of you. That's a lot of fun. Now, once you got the hang of that, then you can say something that's different. It's a little bit more tricky. So you can say, if the programmer scratches their head, then the computer has to scratch their shoulders, okay? So when the programmer scratches their head, the computer you, would scratch their shoulders. Okay, that's a little bit more tricky. So you could take turns, each of you, and then be, take turns being the programmer, and then um, being the computer, of course. And then there's a third part of this game that gets a little bit more tricky and a little bit more fun. Once everybody's had a turn, you can make it a little bit more trickier and a little more sillier too with this next level of the game. It's called if, then, else, okay? So the programmer is going to give a set of instructions that if the programmer, I do like scratch my head, then you, the computer, is going to do another activity like scratch your shoulders, and else, well, that means if I'm not patting my, scratching my head, then you do something else. It has to be another action that's different. And this is where I'm gonna be a little silly. Okay, so if I'm scratching my head, then you, the computer, have to scratch your shoulders. If I'm not scratching my head, then else, you have to do a crazy dance. Okay, so if that means if I touch my cheek, then you have to do a crazy dance. All right, so let's try that one more time so you get the hang of it. So I'm the, pro the programmer, and I'm going to scratch my head. Now as the computer, I'm going to be scratching my shoulders because the programmer is scratching their head. As the programmer, I'm going to be touching my cheek. And as the computer, I'm going to do a crazy dance. In the description box below, I'll include the directions for this game and even some suggestions on how you can make it a little bit more silly. I also want to tell you about the Hour for Code, which is a worldwide initiative to get kids excited about computer science through the use of some short activities or games on the website code.org. I'll include a link in the description box below that will all bring you right to the site, plus it'll highlight some of the games that I recommend that you start. Now for beginners, even kids who aren't ready to read yet, they can start out with Codable, which is a fun FUDS family. It will introduce you to the beginning concepts of coding, which is directional movement, and then sequencing, and the conditions that we just uh, explored. No reading or mouse skills are required. There's also um, a fun classic maze that gives you characters from Angry Birds or Ice Age, uh, or even there's one with Star Wars characters, BB-8 and R2-D2. 
And then, of course, there's Minecraft and so much more. So I hope that you'll check that out. I hope you have some fun today. And I hope you can think a little bit more like a computer. Bye. See you next time.